Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and in this video we're going to talk about the Thicken feature. Now the Thicken is a feature that is on your Surfaces tab, and it's something typically used to create solid geometry out of your surfaces. Now it's pretty straightforward, there's not a whole lot to it, so the, really the only thing I want to talk to you about is how to find out where your problem lies if it doesn't work. Now there are some limitations to thicken and I'm going to talk to you about them in this example that we use for the boundary video. So on these three parts they're obviously very similar but there are some differences in the edges. We have different curvature in the patches that we made. The surrounding patches are all identical so the only difference are going to be the boundary surfaces. Now with the thicken tool, it'll allow us to take this and create solid geometry, but if we push it past a certain point, you'll often get an error message. And what I want to help you is figure out why you get that error message and what it means. So let's go ahead and let's start by using thicken on this example here. And let's say that we want a six millimeter inward thickened feature and say, okay, let's see if it happens. Now you see that it says failed to offset or face could not be deleted. Now, when it talks about faces to be deleted, if you offset something that has an internal fillet and you go to the point where the fillet is actually gone, in some cases it can delete the fillet and make a sharp corner on the inside. Not all the time, it really depends on the surrounding geometry. If it's a block or um, a, a set of straight lines that's been extruded and then filleted, yeah, it'd probably be okay to, to offset those and get rid of them. When it's something like this where it's a complex shape, it does not have any available option. But the problem in our case is the radius of curvature. Now on our Evaluate tab, we're going to use Curvature, and we're going to take a look at this. And you're going to make use of the fact that when you hover your cursor over an area, it will actually show you the radius of curvature. Now when we do this, we go to the red areas, because these are the areas where we have the sharpest transition. And when we move the mouse around, you can see a lot of these areas are above six millimeters, but some of them are below. This one's 5.2, real close to the center here, and that would be the, the area that has the most rate of change. So because we tried to do a six millimeter thicken, but the radius of curvature is actually below six in some areas, it was not able to recreate that geometry. So if we go back to surfaces and we do thicken, and instead of six, we put something like four that's less than it, we'll go ahead and say okay, and it should be able to create that thick and that offset. It's thinking, it's thinking because it does have some complex geometry to deal with and now we have a solid body. If we rotate this around you can see that we do have a complete solid but you will notice some problems. Now the underside doesn't look very good. This surface here is, I can't even tell you what's going on. It's sort of folded under on itself and over here you can see that we have a very bad result. I can't even select that surface very easily. And that would not be something that you would want to produce. You can see that those corners are, are looking very bad. If we modify the thicken, we take it down to something like one millimeter, you see that it really doesn't have a problem. The edges all offset fine and everything sort of works, works out well. But if we try to do it thicker, if we needed that four millimeters, we would kind of be out of luck. So when you have these problems, when you start to use the thicken and you run into these issues, you really need to look at the radius of curvature. Now, it's very easy to think about this when you're talking about square edges and a fillet. If you apply a five millimeter fillet and you offset five millimeters, that fillet's gone. But it's a little harder to understand when you're dealing with things like boundary surfaces because you're not necessarily giving it a five millimeter value. You're giving it a spline, some sort of complex curvature, and you're sort of hoping for the best when you make the surface. Let's take a look at this, this um, other example over here, the last body that we did. So if I go back to evaluate and I turn my curvature analysis on, we look at this, you can see that again, it's got some areas that are below five. So let's go ahead and let's try to thicken this one and let's try to do it four millimeters as well. You see that we get a preview on the underside of the dark blue section and it looks okay, we'll say okay. And you see that this one actually works out fine. Now, even though the radius of curvature in this area was actually about 4.7, which was less than the radius of curvature in this one, 
it worked out better. And the reason it worked out better is because we had more control over this edge here. This edge, we used that, the, the style spline with a B spline degree seven. We gave it a nice smooth transition. We didn't have any pinch points or, or hard points. And on this example, we did a standard spline and we used an equal curvature relation. Now you'd think that equal curvature would actually give us a good result, but it wasn't nearly as smooth. And these two don't look very different. This one is actually has a little bit of a higher peak, which would produce more problems with the thicken. So I know this video is about thicken, and we're really talking more about the boundary, but I do want to mention that because we used more control over that spline and making this edge and making these boundaries, we have a better result here, and we are able to thicken it. So now that we understand that a little bit, let's go ahead and let's hide our surfaces. Let's hide the first thicken and let's just talk about this example here. I do wanna talk about another downfall to the thicken. Now, it might just sound like I'm, I'm talking about bad things with thicken, but thicken is a very useful tool in some cases, not every case. Whenever you're making drafted parts, so this part was designed to be molded. There are angles on the edge, they're drafted edges to make sure that it can pop out of a mold. Whenever you thicken a part, it's going to thicken it in the normal direction. So this edge, for instance, when it thickens it, it thickens it out and down because that is the normal direction to the curvature there. When we come up here, up to the top, it's thickening downward. Now it's a little bit easier to see this when we do a section view. So when we look at this, Essentially, this point here is thickening this direction. This point over here is thickening this direction. And down here, it's thickening this direction. Now, the area that this produces problems is when you have a drafted part, typically, you're going to have a flat surface on the bottom. You're not going to have the geometry where you can make something that looks like this. This is typically something that would more happen if you have a composite part, a molded part that you're hand laying or you're using um, some sort of autoclave or vacuum bag or whatever the case might be. This would be a more acceptable result for something like that. When you're dealing with a plastic molded part that has these edges that are at an angle, the thicken doesn't really work too well because to make this work, you'd have to go back and trim these edges. Now, most of them are gonna lie just below that plane, but you're not always gonna have that option. So we could take this and we could trim using the top plane and remove the sections, or if we're doing this as a feature, we can come back and we can split. We can split all bodies and we can remove this bottom section by consuming it. Remove this section as well. You'll notice that this area in the middle doesn't actually have any of a, a section to cut away. And that could also produce problems for us because we may or may not have a planar face here anymore. One quick test to see if you have a planar face is see if it'll let you sketch on it. Now, if we go here, we can sketch on this face, but here we don't have the sketch option. So even though we trimmed away most of it, we still don't have a flat bottom face. Now we're gonna talk about the available option or a way that you can really work on this in another video, but I wanna mention it here quickly. What you would typically do is fill the bottom of this you would knit it together as a solid, and then you'd use the shell tool. The shell tool will approach it in just the same way as the thicken tool. You need to make sure that your geometry is capable of going to that dimension. If you have a radius of curvature of five millimeters, you're gonna to wanna to go less than that in order to, to make sure that it will succeed. But the shell, by creating a surface on the bottom of this and then shelling it out, will ensure that you have a flat, planar edge on the bottom, just like you would want in a molded part. So again, we're gonna talk about that in its own video, but I did wanna mention it briefly here, just in case that's the type of thing you're doing and you want another option than Thicken, that's the route you would go. But again, Thicken is a very helpful tool, especially if you're dealing with more of a composite type part, something where you're making a shape and you need to thicken it out in the normal direction. Something you would see if you were making um, fiberglass parts for motorcycles or cars, whether it's fenders or hoods or whatever the case might be, that would be an acceptable use of the Thicken tool in my mind. But play around with it, see how it works with your designs, and maybe it's just what you need. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit LearnSolidWorks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.